Putting together a gaming PC on a super tight budget has been rather difficult in recent years, but I'm here to tell you things are getting better. I challenged myself to build something affordable, upgradable, and a strong performer at 1080p for both gaming and streaming for a budget of $300. Let's see what parts we ended up with. Welcome back. If you're new around here, my name is Chris. This is Coalition Gaming, and I like to teach you guys about repairing, setting up, and streaming from your PC. If you're into that sort of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. When we're looking at a budget of $300, a custom build isn't really an option, and so we end up looking at the tried and true method of adding a decent GPU to a pre-built PC. Most people look for run-of-the-mill office PCs like Dell Optiplexes. I'm not most people, though. There are. You have my attention. Anyone who's familiar with my content knows where I'm going next with this. Powerful pre-builds for cheap exist out there, and for me, eBay is where they live. With that in mind, I set out to find myself an HP Z440 pre-built. These are workstations which are something stronger than your average office PC. I ended up finding a Z440 workstation with 16 gigabytes of RAM and the factory 700 watt power supply. These power supplies are actually pretty solid units from an, o from an OEM brand called Delta. We still need a CPU, SSD, and a graphics card though. For the CPU, a solid choice for a measly $16.50 is the 6-core 12-thread Xeon E5-1650 V3. This is a Haswell EP CPU with a 3.5 GHz base and a 3.8 GHz turbo. What's also good is that in comparison to mainstream 4th gen like the i7-4770, this has 15 MB of level 3 cache versus 8 MB on the 4770. If you paid attention to modern CPU releases, level 3 cache has become a big deal for gaming. So this this is another advantage this platform has over standard grade Haswell. Nice. Storage was easy with the Silicon Power A55 512GB SATA SSD being a solid choice for $30 brand new from Amazon. Lastly, the GPU I chose is the venerable Radeon RX 580. This GPU on eBay and OfferUp seems to hover around the $80 range, so that's the price point I'm going with. Alternatively, GTX 1060s also float around the $80 price point on sites like OfferUp, so if you're comfortable hunting for deals locally, you may be able to find other options that would make you happier. Either way, the RX 580 and the GTX 1060 are competitive with each other, so let's get to the total cost. With the pre-built costing $165 from eBay, $16.50 for the CPU, $30 for the SSD, and $80 for the graphics cards, we end up with a total of $291.50. A 6-core, 12-thread gaming system with 16 gigabytes of RAM that can play most anything at 1080p with at least 60 FPS for under $300? Not bad at all. Not bad. Not bad. Now, while this has been more of a parts list than an actual build, I do have an RX 580 and a somewhat similar system on my test bench, so without further ado, here are some benchmarks. If you like what you saw, just know that the system I'm talking about for this video will do at least as good as those benchmark numbers. Yes! By the way, links to everything I'm talking about will be down in the description below, so make sure to check there if any of this interests you. In the intro, I mentioned upgradability as a desirable feature, right? Well, aside from upgrading the GPU to something stronger, if you so desire, the CPU would be the next thing to upgrade. 
Since this platform is not overclockable, you're kind of limited on options that maintain a high enough bass and turbo frequency. For gaming, I say the best mix of frequency to course for this HPZ 440 that will still give you great gaming, multitasking, streaming, and content creation performance would be the Xeon E5 2667 V3. This is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU with a 3.2 GHz base clock, 3.6 GHz turbo, and you can find them on eBay for a blisteringly cheap $25. That's what I'm talking about. Wow! <laughs> Another point of upgradability pre-builds usually have to deal with is the power supply. While the 700 watt unit should be strong enough for most applications, if you wanted to upgrade it, then all you need is this adapter to use any standard ATX power supply. You might only be able to use two screws to mount it though, so I suggest a little double-sided tape to be on the safe side. One more note about the stock power supply. It does have two six pin PCIe connectors for graphics cards, but whatever GPU you end up with or upgrade to may need eight pin connections. No worries, these six pin to eight pin adapters can help you out. In most cases, you should be fine using adapters like these, but if it worries you, the aforementioned ATX PSU adapter will let you upgrade your PSU if you don't want to go this six pin to eight pin adapter route. What would you put together with a $300 budget? Would you have done anything differently in this build? Drop a comment down below and let's talk about it. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, I stream to Twitch every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash coalition gaming crew. So feel free to stop by, drop a follow and talk about this video or anything tech related. I'm done here. If you wanted to see a past $250 gaming and streaming build I did a while back, I'll have it linked right over there. So uh, make sure you check that out. If you wanted to look at some GPUs to throw in a system like this, check out my video on GPU price drops. Also linked right over there, right there and right there. All right. Peace out for now. Bye.